Okay, so welcome. so welcome back to the third session of today, and it is from Copenhagen here, and we are hearing Ricardo Gonzo will talk about an infinity of amplitudes relations in classical physics, and I'll give you some markers along the way. Okay, thanks, Samuel, uh, and I would like to thank the organizers for the kind invitations. It has been already a nice conference, and I'm looking forward to all the other speakers. Uh, on the week. So today I'm going to talk about uh, these two, two papers which appear recently, like the one with uh, Ruth Brito and Guy Joe, and the second one with uh, Andrea Cristopoli, Nathan Moina, Diana O'Connell, Matteo Sergola, Alas de Ross, uh, and Chris White. So uh, I will start with some motivation uh, while we're looking at this problem uh, of um, basically um, how to create a, a wave like out of scattering amplitudes and how to describe it with uh, quantum states. Then I will uh, um, uh, express the uncertainty principle and I will describe how to implement it in the chemochromalism. And from that, we will derive like the consequences at the level of the uh, scattering amplitudes, what this implies for coherence, and in particular, how to extend the iconal formulation, at least uh, a minimal extension with uh, uh, radiation. So first of all, um, so yeah, we, we want to understand like uh, how to describe uh, waves uh, from scattering. These are relevant for the uh, spiral phase of uh, compact objects which are merging in the sky. And uh, people are usually um, thinking about uh, um, uh, five point functions uh, when the, 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 uh, at, at the level of scattering amplitudes, but in principle, they can be higher point function contributing to the wave. Uh, in particular, we know that in classical limit, that there they, they should be a large number of gravitons. So how can we reconcile this idea uh, with uh, the five-point function? And uh, in particular, uh, what is the analytic structure of the final semi-classical state in the final in a scattering problem? It's a very important question. And uh, uh, this also will answer like our the gravitation uh, waves really generated at the quantum level. And um, okay, let's see. Uh, so uh, I will start with uh, uh, an intro light introduction to the chemochromalism, uh, which uh, was developed by uh, Kosover, Navy, O'Connell uh, three years ago. So basically, you consider uh, two uh, massive uh, scalar, for example, particles, but also with spin, uh, separated by uh, an impact parameter b. And here, the, the Compton wavelength and uh, the wave function spread like uh, satisfy uh, are, are much smaller than the input parameter, and they satisfy air inequality such that uh, basically, when uh, you use this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, states, like you will achieve the classical limit, and uh, the external wave function will localize in the classical trajectory for the massive uh, uh, particles. And this can also be extended, uh, uh, including to include waves using coherent states. And uh, you can see David talk tomorrow. Um, in particular, uh, classical observable uh, are studied uh, computing expectation values in some kind of uh, uh, essentially on-shell in informalism, uh, where uh, you use the S metric, you span it as uh, this connected part plus connected part, and this will give you, uh, in general, contribution which are uh, linear in the amplitude and the conjugate, and also quadratic ones. And we'll see now uh, how this can be uh, derive. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's um, this formalism, in some sense, uh, is just a classical on cell reduction of the in informalism. You can uh, in the in informalism, like it, it's all off shell. You basically have a, a, a swinger uh, Kaldish contour, which is the one uh, in the middle, which goes above and below the, the time axis, which go from minus infinity to plus infinity, and from plus infinity to minus infinity. And basically, depending on where the, uh, um, the fields are, the fields are depending on positions, like uh, you have different propagators. And if you are on the, on the upper branch of the contour, then these are time order fields. So you will get from the LSA reduction of time order correlate, you will, you will get the uh, S matrix elements linear in the amplitude. From the uh, lower branch of the contour, you will get anti time order elements. So you will get a contribution linear in the conjugate part of the amplitude. And when you have a mixed uh, uh, propagator, which are the off, off, uh, off diagonal pieces in the uh, Swinger Kaldish basis, then you will get essentially the unitarity cuts. 
And uh, basically what we're doing in, on top of the on LZ reduction, we're also uh, using the external chemo grade functions uh, to, to achieve the classical limit. Um, okay. So uh, the main part of this talk is to understand like uh, how the, uh, what, what it means really to have the uncertainty principle at the, uh, at the quantum level, what does this imply for the scattering amplitude? We know that for the, the, the classical scattering problem, we just have one Riemann tensor, one classical momenta, for, of course, for the two massive uh, fields and one classical spin vector. And they obey a set of differential equations with some uh, boundary conditions. So in particular, uh, we expect uh, the expectation values to factorize. And uh, this usually has, uh, I mean, people have looked at this as a consequence of the calculations, but here we take it as a first principle. So we want to solve for which S matrix uh, will satisfy this uh, uncertainty uh, principle relations uh, essentially. So we impose this as a first principle. And this also both uh, uh, in the conservative sector uh, in the relative sector, in the mixed conservative relative sector, and also for uh, the spin spin. So it, it's actually uh, quite, uh, uh, quite interesting to explore these relations. And you can also see Donald's talk uh, uh, on a Friday. Okay, so first of all, like uh, as a very simple example, we consider a bunch of harmonic oscillator in a, in a finite box. And uh, if you have a finite box, you have a finite number of allowed momenta, uh, in the, in the dual momentum lattice. And this means in particular, you have a fine number of harmonic oscillators, for example, for the radiation. And you can write uh, a generic uh, density matrix uh, for all these oscillators uh, in terms of uh, some probability distribution. This was discovered by uh, Glauber and Starch. And so you can do this for all these oscillators. And these are uh, simple harmonic oscillating quantum mechanics still. We haven't taken the large volume within it. And uh, the uncertainty principle, let's say, just, just for this example, R3 to the field strength, just to avoid, uh, but it works, of course, for the Freeman tensor, for example. Uh, let, let, let's see what are the consequences of assuming the uncertainty principle. Okay, so if you compute these expectation values, uh, classically, with uh, uh, the free field expansion for this harmonic oscillator, you will see that essentially asking the uncertainty principle means uh, that uh, you should have that, uh, um, the expectation value of the product over the distribution P has to be equal to the product of expectation values. And now it's, a, uh, it's not an operator statement, it's a, a mathematical statement, and it's equivalent to the zero variance principle. So now you can look uh, in a uh, um, probability test book and look at uh, zero variance, and you will see that all the, all the distribution with zero variance has to be degenerate. Uh, and uh, in particular, therefore, there should be a combination of uh, delta functions. This is both for the real imaginary part uh, of, uh, of alpha. Uh, and uh, also there was this uh, really nice paper by, by uh, Hillary a long time ago in the quantum optics, which says that essentially uh, every superposition of coherent state has to be trivial. So there is only one essentially uh, coherent states. And also classical pure states are always coherent states. So this actually follows. Also, if you evolve a pure state with the S matrix, which is the incoming uh, chemo state, and you look at the final state, and you impose that to be classical, uh, and uh, of course it's pure by unitarity, that it, this, this also suggests that the final state has to be coherent, but we'll see more uh, later. Uh, this can also be generalized for uh, classical massive external particles. In this case, you just uh, you can use the Swinger SU2 structure, you just have two S plus one harmonic oscillators, for each of the harmonic oscillator, you still uh, basically repeat the same procedure uh, I was telling before, and you still end up with the same answer. So basically you have a zero variant principle also for in the spin space uh, from, uh, uh, and uh, also thanks uh, to these people who are extending the uh, peer presentation, the Glauber Stash and uh, uh, Giraud, Brown and Brown. Uh, so uh, this is very important because it tells us that somehow the exponentials are the solutions of the uncertainty principle. So it's a, uh, it's a kind of uh, nice idea to see, uh, at least in this simple example, like uh, how this exponential arise. Uh, let's look at now at uh, coherent states just from uh, uh, the metric perspective. So a leading word in a surface function, uh, uh, you can always uh, study the problem uh, of basically having a source, an R source emitting soft photons, and this could be solved exactly. 
And this will be very important. We'll also explain later why. And uh, this can be done in a variety of ways, like uh, really by solving the dynamics, uh, some fadi schoolish techniques, uh, or, or just by using the word line as we also we have done. And uh, essentially, uh, this fact that there is uh, an art source, a uh, classical source emitting uh, soft photons, means that the problem is really tractable uh, for, 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 the, for, for the leading soft dynamics. And here, for the leading soft dynamics, the uncertainty principle uh, essentially reduced to the fact that uh, the leading soft theorem uh, makes uh, uh, um, all the expectation values to factorize because they essentially can use only in this, uh, in this leading approximation, like uh, uh, the, uh, the leading soft theorem is, is, is valid. So therefore, for example, energy energy even shapes correlated to factorize. That's also something we uh, shown last year uh, with Andre. Um, okay, so the lesson is uh, knowing the infradynamics is extremely useful. So but we'll, we'll see also uh, an example later. Uh, okay, so it's important now to understand what are the uh, consequences at the perturbative level uh, of the uncertainty principle. So we start with uh, uh, the chemo state again, and we consider only the unshared additive part of the Riemann tensor. So here we take in the uh, single Keldish idea. Later, we take the LS interaction on everything, basically also the fields. And we just consider the on-shell part, which is uh, essentially what you need for the waveform, for example. And the leading contribution indeed is uh, uh, related to the five-point function, uh, which is uh, order kappa to the cube. And there is a prefactor uh, h bar to a seven up, which will be important uh, later. So what, the, what classical physics uh, say is that now if you consider expectation value of the product, they should factorize. So you, you multiply kappa cube by kappa cube, you get kappa to the six. And this is actually uh, the six point one loop uh, amplitude. Uh, so you expect the six point one loop to be classical and somehow related to the 5.3. Um, but instead, like uh, if you compute this expectation value uh, a leading order, like perturbatively, you get the 6.3 amplitude. And here the, the, the prefactor is to bar to the five. So there is, uh, discrepancy which need to be resolved. And the only way to resolve this is that uh, uh, the 6.3 amplitude is classically suppressed. So, uh, and we need to check this uh, uh, diagrammatically. Okay, an alternative uh, way of uh, proceeding, uh, which is uh, uh, basically uh, equivalent, but it shows another perspective on the problem which is quite useful, is that we can consider really the, the gravity and particle distribution in the final state, again, uh, using the chemoformalism. And uh, in this case, like this will give, be given by a sum of this probability of emission uh, multiplied by uh, the number of uh, graviton emitted. Here we have to use an um, a infrared cutoff because of course we know in the, in the, in the infrared, like uh, the number of gravitons will be extremely large. So that will diverge. Uh, and actually the same is uh, true for the variance. You, so you can also consider the variance of the distribution. And, uh, and, and again, you still have this uh, infrared cutoff. But uh, what we know uh, is that uh, actually zero energy gravitons exponentiate exactly to a Coulomb state. And Coulomb state obeys uh, a Poisson distribution. And therefore, like in the low energy physics, uh, we know the result. And uh, we know that uh, the mean and the variance has to be equal because that, that's what happened for a Poisson distribution. Um, so now we claimed, uh, basically, if you, if you subtract the variance from the mean from the variance, then this quantity is IR finite. So, uh, and that, that's, uh, that's kind of nice. Like in some sense it's saying like the deviation from coherence is uh, an infinite finite quantity. And also at the quantum level, uh, we will consider only classical contribution here, but that, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a quantum result. And therefore we can study this perturbatively now. So we don't need any more the cutoff in particular. Uh, you can take uh, uh, an expansion, I ju just, just consider the, the coupling for this uh, L loop amplitude on both sides uh, of the cuts that we've seen uh, before, and essentially expand this probability of emission uh, in, uh, in, in power of G. So we can plug back in the previous formula, we find a uh, formula at all orders in, uh, in the uh, which uh, tells you basically what is the lowest order contribution uh, to the deviation from coherence. Uh, and uh, uh, not surprisingly, maybe uh, a leading order uh, g to the uh, four, uh, you find that this is related to the unitary cut involving the 6.3 and the 6.3 conjugate. 
So in, in some sense, this has to be suppressed, but uh, let, let, let's see precisely how. Uh, we know that uh, the emitted energy at the scale classically, and if you compute the emitted energy, essentially you find the same result as the, uh, the number operator, but the inside there is an integration, there is a weight factor, which is H bar omega. But the, 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 the sum of the amplitude, the, the cuts is the same. So essentially we just rescale by H bar such that we pick up the, the classical contribution only. So the, actually the quantity we consider is the uh, H bar times delta. And H bar times delta is a, a, a well-defined meaning. And, uh, uh, we'll, uh, and, and the claim is this, that uh, if it's zero, then, then coherence is obeyed. And particular, the 6.3 must be suppressed. So this you have to do the, uh, of course, the, phase, the, the calculation, the, the scaling H bar or the phase space of these integrals. Um, also, um, uh, we don't need to consider only the, uh, uh, the leading, uh, uh, these, these are the, the leading moments of the distribution. So in particular, it's the first moment and the second connected moment. And uh, more in general, you can just con consider higher factorial moments. And you know what you expect from a, a Poisson distribution. So you can just uh, uh, basically consider deviation from that. And again, because of uh, zero energy gravity and exponential shape to queen states, then this, this is a well-defined uh, quantity to consider uh, in our problem. OK, so let's come to the calculation now, finally. So what uh, we have done uh, is the, to extend uh, uh, the parameterization that uh, Chong and Remmer found um, uh, four or five years ago uh, and by uh, extending to uh, minimally coupled scalars. Essentially, this parameterization uh, is very nice because it's, uh, you get a trivalent action that works very well at uh, uh, three level. And there was, we get an auxiliary field, which is related to the connection is somehow similar to the Paratini formulation in GR. And also you can extend it here to get to scalars. And the, the, the only non-trivial uh, kind of term is this determinant in front of the mass, essentially for this mass scalar. And so you just expand the determinant and you find the, the final rules. So we have used this and the calculation is not too bad. Actually, it's only 68 diagrams uh, for GR. And you see there are no higher point uh, contact vertices. And uh, uh, the auxiliary field here, you can see three of the diagrams. Like uh, it's nicely resumming those uh, higher point contact vertices in a kind of trivalent way, which I find it quite nice, uh, similar to the double copy spirit in some sense. Uh, and uh, of this uh, 68, also the first 42 are in one, one corresponding to calculation of uh, in scalar QD which uh, uh, I've done with uh, uh, Andrea, Nathan, uh, Donald, uh, Matteo, Alastair, and Chris. Uh, and it will be interesting, of course, to extend this to uh, also loop level by using unitary cuts, uh, for example, as was done for by, uh, with the original John Graham and by these people. OK, so uh, what we've done as well is to uh, study the same amplitude, but also from the BCW perspective, to have also some uh, understand uh, if there are problems, for example, in shifting mass spinners. And uh, here we have considered an equal mass three line shift. Uh, I won't go too much in detail, but uh, basically uh, we have checked like, uh, we couldn't check from first principle that the large Z behavior was okay, but we checked from the Feynman diagram. So we have control now of the Feynman diagram calculation. So we could check the boundary terms uh, numerically, for example, and they vanish. So this calculation justified uh, but it would be nice to find a, a, a good argument of why this works in general. Uh, and uh, in particular, then uh, you can also consider a standard BCW shift to get the six point out to the uh, five point uh, and the four point from the, from the, factor, from the factorization. Um, and that, that, that also works and we have checked the boundary terms as well. And this agrees uh, with the Feynman diagram calculation. So we uh, will short this. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have used the, um, uh, a symmetric uh, parameterization in terms of basically the momentum transfer to achieve the classical limits. And uh, if you do a naive power county, and when naive power county, I mean, you know, massless propagator scale like one over h bar square, uh, the massive one like one over h bar, and the coupling like one over square root of h bar, uh, then you get these kind of expansions for the five point and the 6.3. That's actually what was uh, found by uh, Luna Nicholson, O'Connell and White was that, 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 that there is a constellation. They, they use a large mass expansion, but that's equivalent. Uh, there is a constellation. The first term, uh, uh, for example, is, uh, is zero in the expansion uh, from the five point, and only the second one survives. And here we find two constellations instead. So it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, double, it's more suppressed. 
And indeed, if you remember the previous scalings, like uh, there was an H bar to the seven alpha for the five point in the expectation value of the Riemann tensor. So that's classical. Whereas in this case, you have an H bar to the minus four and there was an H bar to the five. So actually uh, that term uh, with the 6.3 is suppressed. So, uh, and this we have proved it also in, uh, in scalar QAD. Um, in particular, uh, an analysis of the BCFW recursion uh, suggests that, uh, and also the uncertainty principle suggests that there is uh, this kind of universal scaling for all uh, higher point three amplitudes, which is H bar to minus three minus N alpha. And we have checked also the 6.3 uh, uh, for scalar QED uh, with uh, all these uh, collaborators in the last line. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, we want to understand how this uh, infinity of uh, amplitude relations like uh, this, uh, this classical exponential exactly arise in the, in the S matrix. How to implement basically uh, this uh, uh, with the Econel formulation, for example. Uh, so there is a conjectural uh, iconal uh, representation for the conservative case. So here we just ex uh, express the uh, wave packets in, uh, in, uh, in position space uh, for convenience. Um, and if you use the, uh, the standard iconal formula here, uh, basically you see, you see that uh, you get this uh, iconal phase, which is related to the four point function uh, in, uh, uh, in input parameter space. And uh, you, you just uh, and and what you get when you act in the conservative uh, uh, in, in the conservative dynamics they give you uh, the equation in the middle here and you see it seems complicated but actually when you compute observables you're supposed to take the stationary phase so actually uh, the stationary phase will be kind of exact in a classical limit and that that that, that will give you the, the the classical dynamics so that this uh, some integrals looks complicated but they're not. Uh, and uh, the minimal proposal to incorporate the radiation dynamics is to uh, essentially have a, a coherent state, uh, as I was saying before. Uh, in, in this case, you see the alpha has to depend on the positions. So the, the minimal proposal is this, of course, uh, I mean, needs uh, further checks. But uh, what we have checked, for example, is that if you start multiplying the exponential, the 5.1 loop super classical term is exactly given by the, the first, the, the, the product of the first two exponentials. So it's, a, for example, one non trivial check. Uh, the 6.3 is suppressed, uh, the 7.3 is suppressed for scalar QED. And uh, uh, so we, we have kind of uh, 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 a, a lot of uh, checks of this formula. And also the radiation reaction works. Uh, and uh, you, you get some quadratic contribution which are related to. When you do the, st the stationary phase approximation, you will not have only chi now, you get some quadratic contribution in the alpha, which will give you exactly the radiation reaction of the original KMOC paper. Okay, so I mean, said that, like, what is this alpha exactly? Well, then you just match with uh, uh, the uh, expansion of the uh, standard amplitudes, and it will be given by the five point functions. So once you remove uh, the iteration terms given by uh, the four uh, point. And this is not only the tree, of course, we expand and we check the, the tree, but uh, uh, that this is supposed to be the five point functions uh, at all orders. Okay, so basically uh, what we discovered is that uh, the, the minimum certainty principle uh, suggests that there are uh, uh, exponentials in classical physics arising from the S matrix dynamics which can be chi alpha and also the spin parameter, like the, the, once you include uh, spin, once you include spin. The final uh, scattering uh, state can be written in terms of uh, an equal phase and a coherent state. And this implies an infinity relation which comes from expanding this exponential essentially. So there will be classical and quantum relations. Some amplitudes will be suppressed classically and some uh, classical relation like the 6.1 loop uh, is related to the product of 5.3s. So that's a classical relation. So it will be more classical and quantum relations arising from this. And for classical physics, our findings suggest that we need only to extract chi and alpha from the four point and the five point amplitude at all loop order, of course. And uh, uh, instead of uh, citing too many people, I decided to, to suggest to uh, cite the talks, which are I'm looking forward to in particular, like uh, how to, how can you start efficiently uh, chi and alpha from amplitude? So we see also the talk by Chen uh, before, and I'm looking forward to the talk of Chen and Plante. Uh, so I'm, uh, I want to understand, like it's important to understand the full combined dynamics of spin with the icona. 
and uh, Andres will talk about it, I guess. Uh, it's important to understand the probe limit uh, to get uh, a kind of different expansion, different view on this, uh, for example, uh, delta from at all orders in the probe limit. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting, but also beyond, also for the non-conservative part. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, solutions like in uh, uh, Stromfield QAD, like where they, they basically be able to resum all contributions for radiation reactions, for example, uh, in, uh, uh, in some backgrounds. And that's, that's also relevant uh, here. Uh, and uh, of course, there are analytic continuations for the full final observables, but maybe there is an analytic continuation with chi and alpha. In particular, we know the, um, the differential equation for classical physics are the same for bound and unbound orbits. You just change the boundary conditions. So C suggested there should be a way also to analytic continue chi and alpha. Um, it's important to compute the wafer uh, and also IR, either IR finite uh, relative observables from amplitudes. I still talk uh, tomorrow. And uh, there is an interesting connection with this infinity relation with the infinity relation given by classical soft theorems. Of course, uh, soft theorems can also give quantum contribution in general. Uh, but if you restrict to the, the classical case, at least for the external particles, this will give a, par a, par a partial understanding of this uh, uh, infinity of relations. Uh, there is also interesting to understand I derivative interactions and uh, tail effects. And in particular, I just want to mention also that the exponentiation of dynamics in gravity might be relevant for the S-matrix bootstrap in D4, uh, since uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, problems uh, in D4 because of infrared divergences. But if you dress the amplitude, if you consider the right observables, like uh, even shapes, these are naturally R finite. So there are very natural things to consider, like uh, in D4. And uh, yeah, thanks. And uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for a very nice talk. So are there any questions from the audience? So Alex, Ocho. Okay. So I, I don't see all the hands, but Alex, Ocho, your hand was up. Just clapping. Hello? Sorry, I, I said it was just clapping. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, no, I don't no. hear. What? Okay. Uh... Okay, I had a question for you then. Uh, you talked about this tree line shift and you had to do Feynman diagram calculation. Could you explain why was that? Is that because of the polar infinity or? Uh, no, no, just uh, just to check, like as uh, you know, I mean, in general, like for uh, uh, for the masses case, you can justify a priori the shifts, and there is a very general, there are very general theorems. Uh, and, but uh, for the massive case, in particular, uh, ch um, two pair of uh, massive lines, like this is not being fully understood, and uh, we we couldn't, from first principle, understand why the shift work, but the boundary terms are are canceling here. Okay, so the boundary terms are not there, or what? So it's not a problem. Yeah, they're not there. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Um, the, another question I have, um, but that's more like the basic of, of K mark. Is it possible to do something in not in in formulation, or, or do you have to be in in in? That seems to be the standard. Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on what you want to do. <laughs> so, but can you say? work out stuff in say a normal in out formulation or is it really important for the way that you formulate it? No, no no i mean that's uh, i mean the i guess uh, here i mean it, the camo was devised to, to compute observables uh in a non shell way so essentially it's uh uh i mean it, it relates to amplitudes in a nice way because uh, it, it's it's fully on shell right yeah and yeah. uh but I mean, you can compute in out quantities. Like I don't see a problem. Okay, because it could be say when you're working at the scattering angles and stuff. I mean, most of this is a normal S matrix language. So. Yeah, 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 but there is no problem for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Are there any other questions? Maybe I can ask one question. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Could you uh, say more about radiation reaction in your context? Uh, so you, you said, uh, I heard the radiation reaction and then you said? Uh, yeah, just to understand what you mean uh, in this context. Oh yeah, so basically, you know, there is a standard relation between uh, uh, the impulse and derivative of the equinox phase, right? Which follows from the stationary phase approximation. Uh, so what happens now with radiation? Um, so with radiation, like uh, uh, essentially, uh, once you consider uh, the in so you have also the, the, the other state or the conjugate of this state in the top line, uh, there you, you start to have quadratic terms in the alpha, which comes from uh, contracted oscillators in the coherent state. And therefore, like uh, the, the, the condition of the stationary phase uh, approach is non-trivial because it involves also quadratic terms in the alpha. Those quadratic terms in the alpha relate to the energy, right? So you compute the energy in a coherent state, you get an integral and you get the modulus of alpha square. Uh, and essentially here you get some overlap between uh, the two states uh, with the two alpha, like the, 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 uh, the right one and the left one. Like there will be two different integrals with x1, x2, y1, y2. Uh, and so then that, that enters in the dynamics in a non-trivial way. And we have checked the leading radiation reaction. I see. So you mean this will turn into the, like a square of five point amplitude? Is that what you're telling? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you. But but uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's a bit non-trivial because uh, uh, the the path, you see uh, there is x one x two. So and then the, the, when you when you when you conjugate this this guy in the top line, you will get the y one y two. There is another integral. And you have to consider both and take stationary phase. So yeah, it's a, you get you get an overlap basically, but the five point function squares, yes. Okay. Any other questions? I think there is one by. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's very simple. When you were uh, reconstructing the five point amplitude from the CFW shifts, uh, the uh, you recovered the, the full five point amplitude, or was it already in the classical limit? Uh, no classical, directly the, the quantum one, and then we, we, we take the limit afterwards. And the, could you take the classical limit using uh, spinors, or do you have to use vectors for that? Uh, probably there is a smarter way to do that, yes. <laughs> uh, but which and, do, you, uh, do you use? Uh, no, no, we, we, uh, we kind of look at how basically uh, this, um, uh, how it works for this scaling of the higher point three amplitudes, essentially from BCFW, and essentially you see there that you can take uh, the um, the H bar limits in a kind of nice way. Things combine in a nice way, uh, and uh, they, they they seem to um, uh, some factorization channel disappear essentially, if I remember correctly, and uh, and basically uh, that that you 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 can see how uh, the 6.3 arise from the 5.3 and why it's suppressed in some sense. But uh, we, we, we haven't used that technology for the five points. So we just, I think we compute the five point uh, quantum and then we took the limits of that. I think, I uh, yeah, there might be a smarter way of uh, uh, doing uh, this uh, shift in such a way that uh, you stay That's on it. the classical. Can I, can I comment? Yeah, no, I, uh, uh, no, I, I just uh, was asking because uh, at some point we were trying also to reconstruct this five point amplitude using spinor, but then if we wanted to take the classical limit using the spinors, then we encountered a problem. We weren't able to reproduce the, the classical amplitude with, with vectors unless we re expand the, the amplitude with vectors in, in spinors that re expand the classical limit. So I was wondering where you were encountering this same problem in this. In this yeah, I think we were, you, we were, yeah, where you, uh, we, we spent some time understanding what are the right values with as nice H bar scaling, in particular also in the shift. So mm -hmm. uh, if you look in the papers, there are some details about that. Uh, I, I think that at some point uh, we realized with, with Fabian that uh, this five point amplitude were yes, KK. So you can, you can just compute them in any dimension. They are not really sensitive to dimension, and basically you can just compute five point massless uh, with two massless scalars. Sorry, with four massless legs and one one external gravity, and just do KK reduction, and you get the five point. So that's probably the reason that BCFW you work on. It's probably true at fixed points as well. Oh, that's a nice explanation. Yeah, that. Uh, so you have checked this. 
Yeah, yeah, and you can do the, the, the BCFW, I think, uh, in, in, in general dimension. So that, then you can use the general theorems, I guess, for the muscle, massless case. And, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that uh, yeah, justifies. I yeah. see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very that's, much. That's, that's probably in our, in our uh, 2019 paper, yeah. yeah. I see. I see. Okay, okay let's uh, rise to the next talk in the... So, Andre? Hi. Hi. Um, 